Chinese property tycoon Pan Shiyi, chairman of Soho China, is both famous and controversial in China. He made a 50 million donation to Harvard University in 2014 and set up a foundation to donate 100 million to Harvard. And in the same year, he donated 50 million to Yale University, after which his two sons attended Yale and Harvard respectively. He was recently spotlighted by the media in China again because his son, Pan Rei, was reported to have made sensitive comments on the Weibo comment section. On March 1, 2021, the Law on the Protection of Heroes and Martyrs took effect, making it a crime to insult or defame officially recognized heroes and martyrs in China. After the Sino-Indian border conflict in June 2020, Pan Rei was reported to have violated the martyrs law when he posted on his Weibo account on June the 23rd, 2020, that at least one battalion of our army was buried alive in the Sino-Indian border conflict and there is no chance of a sky burial for them. Lately, the Haidian District Public Security Bureau in Beijing issued a manhunt for Rei, and the party media CCTV News and People's Daily picked up the news, which in China means that the manhunt for Pan Rei came from instructions from top of the Communist Party and intentionally making the news bigger. In fact, Pan Shiyi, who has money and power in China, has close ties to the top of the Chinese Communist Party. But his son, Pan Rei, has repeatedly posted sensitive messages on Weibo criticizing the CCP system, and has written praise for citizen journalists Chen Chu Shi and Jiang Zhan, who were sentenced by the CCP authorities. On April 1, 2020, Pan Rei changed his profile picture to a comic strip that insinuated the June 4, 1989 tanks, and invited others to join him. All these actions have touched the bottom line of the Chinese Communist Party. The incident sparked a heated discussion on the internet. The verbal and written criticism of Pan Rei, led by Si Man Nan, a Chinese net army commonly known as Wu Mao, soon turned to criticism of his father, Pan Shiyi. According to Si Man Nan, who somehow represents the direction of public opinion within the top Chinese Communist Party, Pan Rei was described as hostile to the socialist system at a young age, and where his hatred comes from, his class. The reason that the Chinese Communist Party is making such a big deal out of this incident is most likely a continuation of the recent series of actions by the Communist Party to harvest wealth from China's wealthy, mainly private entrepreneurs. China is currently facing a financial crisis caused by a huge real estate bubble, and many state-owned banks are in bad debt. Since the 2008 financial crisis, China's rich and powerful have converted a lot of their money into overseas assets, and many projects in the country are now in danger of breaking their capital chains, which is why Xi Jinping has proposed to control capital overflows. Pan Chiyi is no exception, and his sale of Soho China's core business since 2014 has drawn the attention of the authorities. What is going on here? Why does Beijing want to control the capital? Pan Shiyi's story may shed some light on this. Pan Shiyi started out in Hainan province in the early years of his career as a real estate speculator. He then moved to Beijing and co-founded Soho China Limited with his wife Jiang Xin in 1995, where they developed and acquired a series of commercial real estate projects located mainly in the prime locations in Beijing and Shanghai. Soho China was once the largest real estate developer in Beijing and the largest developer of grade A office space in China, and was successfully listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange in 2007, making it the largest IPO of a commercial real estate company in Asia. Many industry leaders attribute Soho China's success during this period to Pan Shiyi's eye for land investment. He has always been known for acquiring land at low prices and then building high-value office projects. In 2020, Jiang Qin and Pan Shiyi's family was ranked 175th on the Forbes 2020 China 400 rich list, with a wealth of renminbi 21.22 billion. After the financial crisis in 2008, Chinese companies began to expand overseas with policy encouragement. In 2011, Pan Shiyi bought the office building of the Port Authority bus terminal next to Manhattan Plaza in New York for 700 million USD. And in 2012, he spent 600 million USD to acquire a 49% stake in Manhattan Park Avenue Plaza. In 2013, Pan Chiyi's wife, Soho China CEO Jiang Qin, partnered with the Brazilian Saffer family to acquire a 40% stake in the General Motors building in the United States for 1.4 billion United States dollars. In addition, Pan Chiyi's son, Pan Rei, established a real estate company in the United Kingdom and acquired a number of property projects there. 
However, after a series of overseas acquisitions, Pan Shiyi and his wife were questioned by the Chinese media for transferring their assets overseas. Pan Shiyi's wife, Jiang Xin, was granted U.S. citizenship early, and since 2015, all of Pan Shiyi's Soho China shares have been transferred to Jiang Qin's name. According to public data, from December 18, 2019 to January 14, 2020, Pan Shiyi registered seven companies in just 28 days, all of them with foreign shareholders. Meanwhile, Soho China has been selling assets in China. From the initial sale of margin assets, Soho China sold its two core projects, Soho Jing'an Plaza and Soho Helen Plaza in Shanghai, to financial street holdings for RMB 5.232 billion within three months in 2014. In the seven years since then, Soho China has staged a series of asset sales. According to incomplete statistics, since 2014, Pan Shiyi has sold nearly 4.5 billion U.S. dollars in domestic assets for cash. Two years ago, Pan Shiyi's intention to bundle the sale of Soho China eight high-end offices prompted the Chinese Communist Party to take action. According to media reports, Soho China intends to sell the assets for 8 billion United States dollars, while Blackstone is offering 4 billion United States dollars only. If the sale went through, Pan Shiyi would be liquidating all of Soho China's assets in China. As one of the most calculating bosses in the Chinese business world, Pan Shiyi's approach has raised two questions. While he keeps telling the public that he will hold on to quality assets for a long time, he was looking for buyers to sell them, even at a discount. The Chinese Communist Party authorities took that as Pan Shiyi was planning to flee for cash. They not only stopped Blackstone Group's takeover, but also directed public opinion against Pan Shiyi and his wife. However, Beijing didn't stop there and continued to look for leverage on Pan Shiyi. That was why they turned their attention to the sensitive comments made by his son recently. In fact, since last year, Chinese entrepreneurs have been in the midst of an eventful year. A commentary by Free Asia said that the Chinese Communist Party fears that once private enterprises grow in power, they will seek a political role and even challenge the communist regime. Therefore, the authority is using the new communist trend to dilute and control private economic power. Knowing the Communist Party is saying one thing but doing another and letting the public power run wild, the owners of private enterprises are in despair. We reported last year on the arrest of Sun Dao, a private entrepreneur in China. The government Baoding city, Hebei province, where the Dao Group is located, has organized a committee to take over the Dao Group, and the company's assets have been seized by the government, leaving the families of the employees in financial distress. This is one of the examples of the Communist Party's seizure of assets after fabricated charges. Liu Xiaobo, the 2010 Nobel Prize winner who was placed under house arrest until his death, once commented on the Sun Dao case, calling the Chinese Communist Party a draconian rule of law, with liberal businessmen as victims. Another example is Alibaba founder Jack Ma. He has been in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party since October 24th of last year, when he criticized China's financial regulatory system at the offshore financial summit in Shanghai, and it didn't take long for him to see firsthand the backlash from the Chinese Communist Party, even though he's worth more than 60 billion United States dollars. On the eve of the IPO of Ants Group, a financial technology company owned by Alibaba in November last year, Ma and other senior executives were interviewed by four major financial regulators, namely the People's Bank of China, China's Banking Regulatory Commission, China's Securities Regulatory Commission, and State Administration of Foreign Exchange. And the IPO of Ants Group was subsequently halted two days before the listing. After the authorities interviewed Ant Group executives for the second time, they imposed five major rectification requirements on the group and required it to reduce its size. In December, Alibaba was also targeted and investigated for suspected monopoly. Beijing also asked Alibaba to sell its media assets, including the South China Morning Post. Xu Li, a close associate of Xi Jinping and vice minister of the Central Propaganda Department, said publicly that he wanted to firmly guard against the risk of capital manipulation of public opinion. Sources close to the matter say Alibaba's enormous media influence has been seen as a huge challenge to the Chinese Communist Party and its propaganda system. Strangely enough, Alibaba's founding and growth have been marked by the help from the Chinese Communist Party, and some Chinese commentators have suggested that Alibaba's plight today is the result of the party's partisan struggle. What's more saddening is that Jack Ma long knew that he could not help himself. When asked by the host at the 20th St. Petersburg International Economic Forum in 2016 
what his biggest mistake in life was. Ma said, "Do you want to hear the truth? The biggest mistake in my life was founding Alibaba, but no one understood what he was talking about at the time." You want to hear the honestly? My biggest biggest mistake was I made Alibaba. <laughs> I never thought this thing is cha- is this thing changed my life. In July 2018, Wang Jian, then chairman of H&A, died in France in an accident. In April of the same year, Wang Jian gave an unsolicited interview to China Economic Weekly and said publicly, "Someone wants to take away H&A." For years, Jack Ma keeps giving up power over Alibaba. On July 27, 2018, Alibaba filed an annual report with the United States SEC disclosing that Aluvie stake is transferred from Ma. In early 2019, Ma talked about being prepared for jail when he created Alipay at a conference for online entrepreneurs in South Africa. On December 10, 2019, Ma resigned in tears as chairman of Alibaba on the 20th anniversary of the group's funding. Less than two months later, on November the 8th, Ma said at an international economic forum in Ukraine that if he were given another chance, he would not try to make the company so big, and once again mentioned that he regretted founding Alibaba. From these examples, we can see that since the reform and opening up and privatization in China, the ultimate goal of communism by the Chinese Communist Party has not changed, but its strategy has changed. They allowed private enterprises to own businesses, and after they had grown strong, the authorities reaped them by so-called legal actions. Realizing that they are in a trap, the owners of China's private enterprises, large and small, are trying to escape China by all means. According to the 2019 Global Wealth Migration Report, the number of Chinese tycoons who immigrated overseas rose from 10,000 in 2017 to 15,000 in 2018. The CCP's ambition to annex private assets is growing, and the pace of recommunization is accelerating. A series of recent actions by Beijing also reflect that the CCP is expanding its ambition to the whole world. Are we in a free society ready for this?